I am so thankful to God for the opportunity and the grace he has given us to all be together today and I hope you're excited to learn something new, something that will change your life forever. Uh, I want you to type where you're watching from and I want you to be extremely excited for what God is going to reveal to you and me today. I want you to, kn to know by the Spirit of God that your greatness spiritually is always measured by the wisdom you possess. Amen. If you are not wise, you are not great. Yeah. All great men are wise. Yeah. And our great God, all wisdom and understanding and knowledge belongs to him. Amen. What makes God God is not just because he's infinite and all powerful, but he's God because he knows what we don't know. Amen. Uh, I feel like it's too quiet for me no, right now. We're here. We're are you sure you're here? We're here. Now, I won't be too long. I'm going to be short because I want the Holy Spirit to direct me to the best of uh, my ability and my ability to follow him. Amen. Uh, I want you to really be blessed today Amen. by the mercies of God. And I know that something so beautiful will take place. Amen. Um, I want you to share this as many times as you can, as many times as you can share this so that Jesus may be glorified. Amen. Glory be to the living God. Hallelujah. Forever and ever and ever. Miss Paula Campbell, God bless you. We love you, Mama Paula. God is just so awesome. God is just so awesome. Hallelujah. Somebody Hallelujah. said, Simi Valley where Jesus Christ lives. Amen. I agree with you. Amen. Amen. Kingdom come, God, God bless you. Everybody share as many times as you can. Now, this is a very profound message because it's actually by the Spirit of God that we are speaking about it. Amen. The Spirit of Lucifer. Can I tell you something? So many people are looking for the wrong spirit to reveal the end times. Mm -hmm. mm. So many are looking for the wrong spirit or are, are trying to discern the wrong spirit in order for them to be signaled that it is the last days. Mm. For you to understand what we are going to speak about, it, it really needs you to empty yourself. Because in many ways it will be heavy, but it will be heavy, but it will be beneficial. Amen. Amen. I'll say that again. It will be heavy but it will be beneficial Amen. can you guys hear me we hear you. yes we hear you now i want us to read something first before you understand why we are talking about the spirit of lucifer isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 isaiah 14 verse 12 uh-huh how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Mm -hmm. How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? One more time. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Can I tell you something shocking? Yeah. Lucifer is not the name of the devil. Wow. That's not his name. Let's go. Lucifer is not his name. I don't know why people think mm -hmm. Lucifer is his name. Lucifer is not the name of the devil. That's not his name. Yeah. That is not actually his name. The name that the Bible literally gives him is Satan. Yeah. Mm. That's what his uh, description or the name is Satan. Now his angelic name, truthfully, we don't technically know. Mm. Okay. But in Isaiah, what we just read, he was not speaking about his name. Mm. He was speaking about his function. Okay. Mm. okay. Deep. Okay. <laughs> the name Lucifer is actually a function. It is not the name of the devil. Mm. 
I hope people are listening and I hope people are We're sharing. Listening. Taking it somewhere, Papa. This is good. Read it again. Read it again. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Now, Some you have to understand the name Lucifer means light bearer. Okay. It means one that carries light. Light bearer. Now, if you know anything about God, you know the only one that is actually a light bearer is Jesus. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Wow. Yeah. You see, the name Uriel, one of the chief angels, his name is Uriel, which means the Lord is my light. Okay. Mm. Oh, you understand? Yeah. Yes. So, Lu Lucifer cannot be the name of the devil, meaning that he is the carrier of light. Yeah. It is a description of a function, not a name. Because mm. we only know God is light and in him there is no shadow of darkness. We know Jesus is saying, I am the light of the world. Yes. I am that light that has come into the world that lighters up every man. Amen. Mm. So why is it the Bible is calling Satan Lucifer in this part? And from then everybody attached this name to him. Wow. But in reality that is not his name. It mm. is a function. Mm. Wow. That's good. Deep. Anyone who brings clarity to you in a certain matter, technically they are Lucifer. Mm. Because they are bringing light to you. <laughs> oh. uh, I know somebody is poked. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, the reason why, now let me, before I go deep, let me explain this. Please don't think you know what I'm going to talk about. Just be patient and learn something. Okay. Amen. Amen. Have you ever noticed all the people that are influential on earth, what do we call them? Stars. Stars. Yeah. What do we call them? Stars. stars. Why do we call them stars? Because they are bright ones. They illuminate. Yeah. Right? Yes. Right, yeah. right. Why have thou fallen, O Lucifer, son of the bright one? Mm. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Now we know, the son of the morning, now we know Jesus is the morning star. So what the Bible is telling you, how could you fall Lucifer who was reflecting Jesus? Mm. How could you be cut down? How could you fall? Yet you are illuminating the light of somebody because a star does not give light by itself according to this context. It is reflecting the light of somebody. Mm. Son of the morning. The morning. Mm. Now, if you read Ezekiel, let's look at Ezekiel quickly and then I will explain. Ezekiel 28, 17. Ezekiel 28, 17. Amen. Ezekiel 28, 17. Okay. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Yeah. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. You have corrupted your wisdom by reason of what? Your brightness. Right. What is the brightness that the Bible is talking about that you corrupted your wisdom because of your brightness? You are cut down, you became prideful because of your beauty. Yeah. But you corrupted your wisdom because of thy brightness. Mm. How you have been, how you have fallen, all Lucifer, all light bearer. It's talking about the same thing. Mm -hmm. So notice what made Satan fall was because he used his brightness the wrong way. Okay. Are you guys listening yeah. to me or you're missing this? How you have corrupted your wisdom. Now, when he's saying corrupt, the word corrupt is actually in Greek, uh, in Hebrew, I forget the exact term, but it actually literally means to misuse your skill or to use what you have been given the wrong way. Okay. Wow. Now, what people don't understand is that the one who will set up the stage for the spirit of the Antichrist is the spirit of Lucifer. Come on. Mm. Without the spirit of Lucifer, there is no spirit of the Antichrist. Mm. Mm. Okay. This is why when you read in Isaiah, it says, you have been cast down, you who weakens the nations. Mm. What made the nations be weakened? Is the question because if you understand the spirit of Lucifer, immediately the spirit of the Antichrist is exposed. Mm, yeah. There are so many Christians that are embracing the doctrines 
and the ways of the Antichrist because they don't know they are already under the influence of the spirit of Lucifer. The most dangerous of these two is not the spirit of the Antichrist. It's the spirit of Lucifer. Because the spirit of the Antichrist cannot have a hold unless the spirit of Lucifer is established. Are you guys listening to me? Are, are you guys listening to me? Are you sure you guys are listening? Let me show you a verse then we'll go a little deeper. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. 1 Timothy, Timothy chapter 4, verse 4, 1. 1. Mm -hmm. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, uh -huh. that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, uh -huh. giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Why would many who are in the faith start listening to demons? It is because the spirit of Lucifer will be at work. Because nobody with their conscious mind that has met God will just follow the devil. It doesn't work like mm, that. Mm. There has to be some form of deception that they cannot see the difference that they fall in the wrong place yeah. and follow the wrong path. Are you guys listening yes, to me? Sir. Yes, we're catching. The spirit of Lucifer is extremely dangerous because the spirit of Lucifer comes to establish a doctrine that is not from heaven, that is not from God, that portrays a form of godliness, but it's not godliness. Come on. Mm. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Our government right now is trying to push equity. Is it equity? Right? Not equality, but equity, right? Equity. Yeah. Mm. Whereby the, lev the field is leveled, right? Yeah. It sounds very exciting. It sounds very good. Until you really understand that equity is demonic. Mm. Mm. Right. Let me give you an example. Let's say uh, Pastor Reuel works 18 hours and uh, 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 Bishop Samuel only wants to work four hours. Should they be the same? No. Should they earn the same? No. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells you the worker is worth his wages. wages. But they want to equalize something that you can't technically equalize because it depends on how much somebody wants to give themselves to what they're doing, how much work they want to do, how much committed they are. But if somebody wants to work less and you want to balance it, it's demonic. Wow. You see, what is godly is that give everybody equal opportunity, but what they do with it is their own. Oh, that's good. You can have equality of opportunity, but you can never have equality of outcome. Come on, mm. come on. Powerful. That's powerful. So there are doctrines that even Christians have adopted that sounds very pleasing to the ears, mm. but the spirit of Lucifer has entered. Yeah. Are people listening to me We're or you're, you're not catching what I'm saying? We're We're listening. Listening. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. The spirit of Lucifer is one that always makes people feel woke, mm. but they're in deep sleep. Wow. Mm. Hey, I think I poked some people. Did. Yes, you did. Mm. That is actually deep. YouTube, are you there? Let me see how, how we're doing on YouTube. I can't really see the numbers. Let me see. Even Facebook, I can't see. We're at 34K. I mean, yeah. 3,400. Okay. Yeah. Are, are you guys listening to what I'm saying? The spirit of Lucifer is so dangerous. It's so dangerous because it makes everything that is godly look evil and what is evil to look godly. The spirit of Lucifer makes those things that are godly look evil, and what is evil, it makes it look godly. It's okay. it's okay. There was a time that the world wanted to see miracles. But now, because the spirit of Lucifer has entered people, when they see miracles, they credit it to Satan and not to God. Yeah. Mm. 
So meaning that God cannot perform these works. It's only devils that can perform these works. They have minimized God thinking that they are protecting themselves from falling. But yet they have minimized God because they have praised the power of Satan to be above the power of God. Yeah. They have mm. praised the ministers of darkness and not the ministers of God. Right. Mm. Mercy. When they see somebody prophesying, they will say, ah, that is a medium spirit. Yeah. It's a spirit of divination. So what spirit was Elijah functioning with? Mm. Because Elijah was doing the same thing. Everyone has doctrines that are not biblical but sound godly. Because if you sit down with them and you look in the scriptures, they will find that they are wrong. Everyone is telling you go find God for yourself. But what they don't understand is this. When the spirit of Lucifer enters you, you minimize God. And you will think in yourself that I am actually protecting myself from demonic forces. I but in reality, you're not. Wow. Wow. In reality, you're not because you've just minimized God. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Wow. So it's not even that people are, are looking for a different option. But people are falling, uh, falling because they have been fooled by Satan that that which is good is evil and that which is evil is good. Mm. Mm. Are you guys listening We're to me? Listening. Yeah. 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 Are you guys listening to yes, me? Yes, sir. So, so many people will start to pay attention to doctrine of devils. What is the doctrine of devils? A man or a woman of God should not look so good. If somebody looks so good or they're stealing money from people, who told you that? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 You notice when Adam and Eve fell, they fell because their wisdom was also corrupted. Mm. Yeah. What they knew nakedness to be, nakedness became the wrong thing. The Bible tells you the man and the woman looked at each other. They knew they were naked and they were not ashamed. But the moment they were perverted, their wisdom was perverted. When they looked at their nakedness, instead of being comforted to know that we know each other, they looked at their nakedness and they were both ashamed and they covered themselves. Yet they have seen each other for years for naked. Years. Mm. When the spirit of Lucifer is in you, you judge people, yet you yourself, you're naked. Mm. I'm talking mm. to myself. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm uh, question, if it's okay. Yes. So is that why Jesus was saying, woe unto you for those who call uh, mm -hmm. evil good and good evil because they have that spirit of Lucifer? A hundred percent. That's why Jesus was telling the Pharisees, you are children of your father, the devil, yeah. because he was a liar from the beginning. How could he lie? He was lying because he knew the truth. You see, somebody who lies is somebody that knows the truth. Yeah. Okay. Somebody who does not know the truth cannot lie. Yeah, no, they are just yeah. misinformed. That's good. Are you guys listening to what I'm saying? Somebody who knows the truth is the only one that can be a liar. Jesus. <laughs> because they know the truth and they're speaking differently. But somebody who doesn't know is misinformed. If they speak, the Bible will say they are, they are speaking false witness. Yeah. Are, are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes. So a liar is that person that knows the truth and chooses to speak falsely. To cause somebody to fall. So now, the first symptom, listen to me, I'm going to break down the spirit of Lucifer for you. Amen. The first sign of the spirit of Lucifer in a person is a judgmental spirit. Mm. Mm -hmm. When somebody can spend time criticizing another person, you understand that the spirit of Lucifer has entered. Wow. 
The Bible says it like this. It says, nobody has ever hated his own body. Yeah. But when you see a Christian willing to fight another Christian, willing to make videos about another Christian, not to fast for them, not to pray for them, not to seek God on their behalf, because that is a member of their body, they will go online and make a two-hour video, three-hour video, 20 hours. They have channels dedicated to yeah. exposing other people, but they don't know they're exposing yeah. their own nakedness. That is the spirit of Lucifer. There is no ministry of exposing. It is God who knows everything, not you or me. Mm. You will see people who have never prophesied will try to tell you how the spirit of prophecy works. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I don't know if somebody is listening to me. We are listening. They will try to tell you how the spirit of prophecy works. No, a true prophet will prophesy like this. How do you know? Are you a prophet? Aye. Mm. Come on. Have Jesus. you ever heard the voice of God? Come on. Have you ever been sent by God or do you read from the pages of the Bible? Come on. Mm. You see, the issue with the spirit of Lucifer is this, is that it is downloaded in somebody's conscious and subconscious mind. Mm. It is a spirit that functions with the mind. So the number one sign of the spirit of Lucifer is a judgmental spirit. They will judge even what they don't know. You will see somebody will see, will see you prophesying and they will say, ah, Test every spirit. Okay, did you test it? What are the results? Come on. Mm. Okay. <laughs> are you guys listening to listening. me? Yes. That is the first symptom of the spirit of Lucifer. The second symptom of the spirit of Lucifer is blindness. Blindness. When somebody has been possessed by the spirit of Lucifer, they become blind. Mm. Wow. What do I mean by they become blind? If you read Isaiah, no, Luke chapter 4, Jesus speaks the recovery of sight to the blind. Who are the blind is talking about? Because not every blind person lost their sight. Some people are born blind. So we know that he's talking about something spiritual. Mm -hmm. mm. When the spirit of Lucifer has entered somebody, they can never see they are wrong. They just see everybody's wrong. Mm. They don't just, they are not just judgmental, but they don't see themselves. They only see people. Wow. Mm. When the spirit of Lucifer is in a person, you lose the sense of direction that is supposed to lead your life. Because you don't see anything that you are wrong about. You have zero accountability. Everything is everybody else's fault and not yours. That is the spirit of Lucifer. It's deception. Mm. It is the false light. Wow. Mm. Have you ever met pastors who people leave their church, it is always their fault, not their, it's always the people's fault, not their own? Yeah. Uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm poking some people. Yes, you are. Oh, you are. Yes, you are. Wow. Uh, 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 Tantin Benny? Yes. Can you make sure Drew is, is picked up? Yes. Yes. Mono, can I have water, please? Thank you. Uh-huh. Ask, ask your question. Go ahead. So, Papa, is this what the Bible says when it says that mm -hmm. Satan is transformed into an angel of light? Or a, a hundred percent. Mm -hmm. Be careful because Satan can come as an angel of light. People think that it means that it, Satan will come bright. No, he will come as if he has the right information, but it's the wrong information. That's what brightness is. Brightness in the spirit is not a matter of a bright light. That's not what he's talking about. Him coming as an angel of light, it means that you have to remember the word angel means malak. Mm. Malak means messenger. Mm. Messenger of light. Somebody that is coming to give you clarity but actually is bringing darkness. Mm. Hmm. Teachers. Is, is this making sense, guys? Yes, Papa. You're helping a lot of people. You're helping us, Papa. Is it making sense? Yes. yes. 
So people think that if an angel appears bright, it means that's the devil. That's not what the Bible is saying. An angel of light means a messenger. You see, like if you read uh, uh, um, the book of Exodus, Moses was interacting with Jesus. Do you know that? Mm. Break it down. Moses was interacting with Jesus the whole time. The angel of the covenant was Jesus. That's what the Bible calls him, the angel of mm. his face. Mm. The angel of his face, Oof. the messenger of his face. So when God was saying, uh, are you not afraid to talk about my servant Moses, who I speak face to face, mouth to mouth? Yet the Bible says that nobody can see God yet live. So who was Moses saying? Because the Bible is saying, even the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Mm. Even the image of God shall he behold. Moses saw Jesus. Mm. The one who gave Moses commandments on the mountain was Jesus. Jesus. That is why God, when he was sending the angel of his face, he said this. He said, and when this, the messenger of my face will come, listen to him. Obey the laws he will give you because if you don't obey the laws he will give you, he will kill you. Yeah. No angel gives laws. Yeah. Y'all didn't hear what I said. Jesus. No angel gives laws. It's only God who gives laws. Yeah. <laughs> Are you yeah. guys listening to yeah. me? Yeah. Yes. Wow. I'm catching. The angel of the covenant, when you read in the Bible, it is Jesus. Remember, angel of covenant simply means, the me remember the word angel means messenger. Amen. Yeah. Malak means messenger. Malak means messenger. So in the book of Revelation, when it says, go and tell the messenger, the angel of this church, it is talking about a human being. It's not talking about... An angel from heaven. No. Mm, mm -hmm. I don't know how we ended up there. Uncle right. Sam is asking strange questions. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked, I am confused if Jesus and God are the same person. Yep. Mm. They are. Remember, God is, is invisible. God is omnipresent. God is infinite. But for God to not be infinite, for him to be with human beings, he has to take a form. And when God took that form, he came in the form of a man called Jesus, the God man. Yeah. That is why the Lord Jesus said this when they confronted him before uh, 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 the Pharisees. They said, you being young, who do you think you are? He said, before Abraham, I am. They said, who do you think you are? Ab you are only about 30 years old. How could you say you have seen Abraham? Remember, Jesus is identifying himself the same way he identified himself to Moses. When Moses asked him, what is your name? He said, I am. So Jesus is saying, before Abraham, I am. Mm. 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 Amen. Mm. Wow. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me help you a little bit. This is going to poke some people. Poke them. Can you Man. find that the government shall be on his shoulder? It's in Isaiah. Yeah, yeah Isaiah. Yeah. I want to answer the person that said, I'm confused if Jesus is God. I want to help you before we continue. Can you read it? Yep. And he shall be called. I want to hear the names that the, the child will be called. All right. Huh? Isaiah, uh, Isaiah yeah. 9, 6. Uh -huh. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Notice the child was born, but the son was given. Yeah. And Keep the, going. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, uh -huh. and his name shall be Wonderful Counselor. Notice his name shall be Wonderful Counselor. So when you read in the Bible, when he talks about Wonderful Counselor, who's that? The Holy Spirit. So Jesus is also called the Holy Spirit. Because remember, Jesus said it like this. The Bible says, and the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit is, there is liberty. <laughs> and Jesus said, and the spirit 
that I will send. He shall not speak of himself, but he shall speak of me. So when we say the spirit of God, we are saying the spirit of Jesus. Mm. Keep reading. Uh -huh. The mighty God. The he, sh he shall be called the mighty God. The, meaning apart from him, there is no other God. So when you say almighty God, you are calling Jesus' name. Mm. Keep going. The everlasting father. Oh, so who is God the father? Come on. Because the name of the child is everlasting, meaning that the father that has always existed. Yes, Lord. Keep going. Mm -hmm. The prince of peace. Ah, another name that Jesus is called in the Bible. Another one is what? Prince of peace. Uh-huh. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The Notice Z this. He's talking about the reign of... <laughs> Uh, let me, let me, let me relax. Let's go, let's go, let's yeah, go, go, let's go, let's flow, go. Flow, flow, flow. Let's go back to the spirit of Lucifer. We are not in the identity <laughs> of the Son of God. This is so good. Remember, when we talk about the Son of Man, it's not talking about the Son of a human being. Yes, sir. That's not what it means. It means the divine God in the flesh. Now, the spirit of Lucifer makes you blind. Yeah. It makes you completely blind. It makes you what? Blind. Completely, completely blind. blind. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Number three. The spirit of Lucifer gives you the I spirit. I, 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 me, 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 mm. me. When it is all about you, the spirit of Lucifer has already entered you. Wow. Mm -hmm. mm. Are you are you guys listening to me? Yes. yes, yes we can I wish more thumbs up and more shares will be. Come on. It's so deep. Is somebody listening uh, to me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Is somebody listening to me? We're listening. When the spirit of Lucifer has entered you, it is all about I. I becomes your favorite uh, alphabet. The, the most foolish alphabet is, is the letter I. The f foolish letter is I. That is why the Bible says in the last days, men shall become lovers of themselves. Everybody will love themselves more than others. Yet you see, the spirit of Jesus tells you, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. The spirit of Lucifer says, love yourself more than your neighbor. But they are so close and they are so similar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the spirit of God says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. It means the way I love myself mm -hmm. should be the way I love my neighbor. my neighbor. But the spirit of Lucifer will tell you this. Love yourself and don't love your neighbor. Give him less. Mm -hmm. So it is similar because both spirits are telling you to love yourself. One is telling you the way you love yourself is the measure to love others. The spirit of Lucifer tells you two ways. Mm -hmm. Love yourself, don't love your neighbor as much. Or love your neighbor more than yourself. Mm. Wow. So there are Christians who are doing everything for their neighbors, for your, for your, for, for your friends, but you don't do anything for yourself. True. That's the spirit of Lucifer That's because you're deceived. Mm. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you're sacrificing for the cause of God, but yet you're destroying yourself in the name of God. Wow. Jesus. So when you stand before God and you say, God, I did this, you say, eh, I, I don't know you. Who sent you? Who told you to do that? Papa, yes. I'm sorry, but so when people have this this spirit of self righteousness, it's yes. because the spirit of Lucifer has seized them. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Mm. 
Somebody <laughs> says, man of God, why are angels called sons of men? No, they are not called sons of men. There's no way in the Bible angels are called sons of men. The only part that angels are called sons of God, it was because in Genesis chapter 6, and that is because human beings knew them to be from heaven. Mm. But God himself has never called any angel my son. Never. God has only named human beings his children, not angels. So it says, and the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful. But this was not written by God. These were human beings recording in the time of Noah yeah. what it looked like to them. Mm. Mm. That's good. But the ones that they are calling the sons of God are the same ones that are called watchers. They are an angelic group called watchers. Mm. What some, well somebody asked a good question. Self-righteousness and God's righteousness. That's actually very easy, but it can be complex for somebody that doesn't understand. Kingdom Come also asked a good question. Prophet, can you clarify a bit more on concept of testing the spirit? I have heard you mention it uh, in passing, totally challenged the common interpretation. Okay, I will help you with that too, don't worry. First, let me start by self-righteousness and God's righteousness. Self-righteousness is when you are justifying yourself to stand correctly before God. Mm. So I am doing this because it qualifies me to be this. That is self-righteousness and the Bible calls it filthy rags because no one can earn a position in God or before God. God's righteousness is Jesus Christ because Jesus has, is the one that has made us stand perfectly before the living God. Amen. So anybody that has self-righteousness has abandoned Jesus but everybody that has Jesus has carried what God's righteousness mm. because they understand what they have is not of themselves but it is of God yes sir yeah. does that make sense yes, yes. testing the spirit well you cannot test what you don't have an example, you will know a real Rolex because you've had a Rolex. Yeah. If somebody brings you a Rolex and it, it tick-tocks, tick-tock, tick, you know that's a fake Rolex because Rolex says don't tick-tock. But somebody who's never had a Rolex and they see it just looks like a Rolex, they'll say, wow, that's a Rolex, and they can sell you a fake thing. So what in, in, in short, why did I use that example? Because when people buy fake things, they look real. But somebody who has had a real thing is the only one that will know that it's fake. Mm. So you cannot test the spirit of prophecy unless you can prophesy. Oof. Come on. But you can discern prophecy to be from God by following certain principles. Right. But to test the spirit you cannot unless you are in that dimension. Is this making sense? Yeah. Yes. When people become I, I, me, me, I, I, me, 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 I, 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 me, 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 I, the spirit of Lucifer has already entered them. Mm. The spirit of Lucifer has already entered them. Me, I just do things this way because that's how God talks to me. Spirit of Lucifer. Mm. No man is an island. Come on. If anointed men still have mentors, who are you to not have a mentor? Mm. I just learn straight from God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Cornelius had fasted and prayed for God to direct him. An angel came from heaven and sent him to Peter. <laughs> the angel in heaven was not qualified to lead him. Come on. The angel from heaven sent him to a man that is qualified to lead him. Mm. He said, go into this address, you'll find a man 
Tell him he will come to you and he will teach you and he will show you what to do. You see, the spirit of Lucifer makes you think that you can just do things by yourself. Because it's about you. So people who have the spirit of Lucifer, when they see somebody functioning in a dimension they have never been, it has to be of the devil. Uh, am, am I making sense to somebody? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You see people in the church arguing about tithing. Ah, since when do, do, we, do we argue about, yeah, about, about tithing? tithing? Yeah. You see people f arguing about offerings. Mm. People arguing about should demons be cast out in public or in secret. And the people who are always arguing about these things are people who can't do it. Have you ever noticed people <laughs> who can right. do things don't argue? Yes, sir. But people who can't do anything are the ones that are always in the squares arguing with other people. Mm. Ah, that can be of God. This is of God. How do you know you've never done anything like that? Spirit of Lucifer. Oof. Mm. Number four. Okay. The spirit of Lucifer is divisive. Wow. Yeah. Are you guys listening to me? Yeah. Yeah. The spirit of Lucifer comes to bring division. The spirit of Lucifer comes to bring division. The spirit of Lucifer is a master of division. The spirit of Lucifer is a master of division. The spirit of Lucifer is very good at coming to divide people. And it usually will divide the kingdom of God within itself. Yeah. You see, when Peter came to Jesus and said, Lord, you will never die. Far be it from you, you shall never die. Jesus said, walk thee behind me, Satan. Because he knew Lucifer had entered him. Because he so wrong for Jesus to die. And listen to what Jesus said. For you do not like the things of God. But Peter thought that what he was saying was completely right. Are, are you listening to what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. The spirit of Lucifer comes to bring division. But not division between the world and the church. That's what the Spirit of God comes to do. The Spirit of God comes to make a distinction between the world and the church. The Spirit of Lucifer comes to divide the church. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oof. Wow. That's good. That's a heavy hitter. Yeah. My pastor is better than your pastor. Oh, our pastor is this, hey, our pastor is that. Uh, Listen, not everybody is at a certain level, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did they help you to meet Jesus? Yeah. That's good. Once upon a time, that pastor blessed you. Yes, sir. And brought you to the knowledge of God. Now that you've gone to another church that maybe they teach more advanced things than him, you despise what established you in the faith. You are full. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Mm. Peter really thought that he loved Jesus, but he did not know that love opened the door for Lucifer. You can love a man or a woman of God to a fault. You see, the spirit of Lucifer is so tricky that you can be caught up in it and you don't even know. Mm. Sharon Bray, Bray says, I wish I lived in California so I could attend Revelation Church. In all my years having been in church, I've never heard of this type of teaching. Come it on. is so profound. We thank Amen. the Lord Jesus. Amen. Can I show you something? Yeah. Let, let me read this for you again. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. 
can we read from verse 1? Auntie Benny, read this one. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. All right. 1 mm -hmm. Timothy 4, 1. Now mm -hmm. the Spirit speaketh expressly, mm -hmm. that in the latter days some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Okay, what are those doctrines of devils? Read. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. When you see people hypocritical, to be a hypocrite is the spirit of Lucifer. Wow. Having their conscience Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Okay. Hypocrisy. Yeah. <laughs> a hypocrite is somebody that has the spirit of Lucifer. Are you guys listening to me? Yes, we're listening. A hypocrite is one that carries the spirit of Lucifer. Hypocrisy. If you look at our government, you look at the church, you look at people are major hypocrites. You see, what you see is what you get with me. Yeah. I'm just, I am what I am. Hypocrisy is, the, is a dangerous spirit. You see them wearing masks and then they're telling you wear this and then you see them parting without one. Yeah. <laughs> Rules for you, not for me. Come on. Hypocrisy. Keep going, watch this. Uh -huh. uh, verse 2, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Mm -hmm. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meat. Ah, uh ah. -uh. They will tell you now. <laughs> you see, eating greens is good. But when people start demonizing you for eating meat, can you believe the Bible is even pointing that out? Yeah. When that was written, it looked fishy. <laughs> but today, people are campaigning in front of stores. <laughs> yeah. Do you see how crazy that is? Yeah. That if you eat this, you're not a good person. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Do you get what I'm saying? Oh, uh. Read the next verse. This one is interesting. Um, commanding to abstain from meats which God has created to be received with thanksgiving uh -huh. of them which believe and know the truth. Yes. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused uh -huh. if it be received with thanksgiving. So you should just need to give thanks. But others have demonized you just for eating this because they became vegan. Wow. Wow. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. I have seen people go on to people's pages and attack them just because they eat something. Wow. Lord help. <laughs> it shows you how petty the spirit of Lucifer yeah. even is. Petty. Right. Keep going. Look at this. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, mm -hmm. whereunto thou hast attained. Mm -hmm. But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. Notice, God wants you to be godly. He doesn't want you to, to follow some myths that are not scriptural. Yeah. Yeah. Some will even tell you, you don't need marriage. Yeah. Uh, uh. Just, just be an independent man, be an independent woman, hey, a feminist, hey, uh, masculine, oh, this, this. It's foolishness. Yeah. Sounds good until when you have to die by yourself. <laughs> Matthew chapter 24, verse 10. Verse 10 to 12. Matthew 24, verse 10 to 12. Matthew 24, verse 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Why are people going to be offended? The spirit of offense is the spirit of Lucifer. Wow. Come on. Come on. 
The spirit of offense is the spirit of Lucifer. Uh, are you guys listening to me? We're listening. The spirit of offense is the spirit of Lucifer. We have people who are offended about, listen, everybody is right, has their own opinion. But in today's world, even in the church, you can't have your opinion. If it, it, it doesn't line up with us, then it is not of God. <laughs> so things have to line up to you and what you want, not line up to God. That's the spirit of Lucifer, wow. people. Big time. It's deep. Big time. Mm. Keep reading, watch this. And many false prophets shall arise mm. and shall deceive many. And because iniquity S shall abound. Start again. And many false prophets shall. Before that. And then shall many be offended mm -hmm. and shall betray one another mm -hmm. and shall hate one another. Mm -hmm. And many false prophets shall arise mm -hmm. and shall deceive many. Mm -hmm. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Mm -hmm. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Notice this. How do you know a false prophet? A false prophet is somebody that brings you doctrine that are not scripture. That's the spirit of Lucifer. Are you guys listening to me? We're listening. And remember, a prophet, it doesn't mean somebody that calls himself a prophet. A prophet, the word prophet simply means one who speaks on behalf of God. So if you're a man or woman of God that claims they speak on behalf of God, lead you in ways that are not godly, then the spirit of Lucifer is surely in them. So in wrapping up, in finishing, tomorrow I will come back and I will show you how to overcome the spirit of Lucifer. Amen. Amen. Today I just wanted you to really wake up and realize that the spirit of Lucifer is deeply at work. Yeah. Amen. Deeply at work. Deeply at work. Somebody says, a false prophet is also someone who speaks a word that doesn't come to fruition. That's actually not true. That's not true. Because Jonah was sent to Nineveh and he spoke a word that never happened. Yeah. Nope. That's not it. The Bible says this. It says, if a prophet speaks what does not come to pass, not that the Lord did not speak and he spoke presumably, and he spoke from his own mind. God never said that they are not a true prophet. Mm, that's good. You see how dangerous it is? Yes. Because you see, now we have highlighted, because an example is this. If I tell you what God is going to do, but you don't align yourself with what God oh. wants, and it doesn't come to pass, it's not the prophet's fault. Yeah. It's your fault. <laughs> and there are times that God can say something and God change his mind. You see, Christians don't understand that God cannot change his will. He cannot change his purpose, but he can change his mind to fulfill the same purpose. God changes his mind all the time, but his purpose does not change. Is, is that making sense? Yeah. Even Moses had to stop God from changing his mind. He said, God, please, if you do this, Repent of this thing. If you do this thing, it's, it's not going to look good. God said, okay, 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 I changed my mind. God, the Lord spoke to, 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 to uh, um, what's his name? Uh, um, oh my God, the name is just there. Jeremiah. And told him, Jeremiah, even if Moses and Samuel stood before me, I will not change my mind concerning these people. It means Moses and Samuel changed his mind so many times. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when the Bible says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, it means that God is not changing his purpose. His goal is the same. Amen. God can change his mind. Like God can say, you're going to die tomorrow. And you say, Lord, 
After all that I have done, why do you want to call me home right now? Who's going to feed the widows and the wi oh, I'm, you know what? No, I'll give you 20 more years. Come on. The mind of God can change, but his purpose never changes. And remember God is saying, if a prophet speaks and it does not come to pass, notice he did not say, if a false prophet speaks, it does not come to pass. He says, if a prophet speaks something and it does not come to pass, know that he has spoken of himself, don't fear him. Yeah. It doesn't say he's fake. <laughs> it doesn't say that. Even though false prophets say things that don't happen. Is this, some, is this helping somebody? Yes, it yes. is. Yes. The whole lot. You see how, you see how the, 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 the lines are so close yeah. that if you're not precise by the Holy Spirit, you can miss the whole thing. Yes. Uh, mm. How do you overcome the fear of missing in prophecy? Uh, part one. Part two of the question says... What do you mean missing in prophecy? I don't know. Like if you're trying to prophesy? Yeah. How do you overcome that fear of... Of prophesying? Know, yeah, of missing like... Or I might say being wrong. being wrong. I mean, if God is talking to you, why do you care about being wrong? Unless you're speaking by yourself. Do, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. If God is sending me to speak, I don't care if it is true or not that's what God said now if I'm speaking of my own self and I'm trying to prove something then I will be afraid because I'm not speaking of my own will I'm speaking of God do you understand what I'm saying okay uh, Grace Terry asked how do you test the spirit that speaks you cannot test what you don't have you can discern using the doctrine of God to know if what is being spoken is by the Spirit of God or not. But to test the Spirit, it takes you to have the same Spirit to know what Spirit is speaking. So when the Bible tells you about testing the Spirit, it's talking about those who have matured to a certain level that can know what Spirit is speaking. Mm -hmm. Like an example, when I see somebody with, a, with an evil spirit, I can see it because I have the eyes of the Spirit. But other people have to pray for something to manifest and then they believe that there is a demon. I don't have to. If I look at somebody, I know there's a spirit. I'll do, hey, immediately they will manifest because I am at that level. I can test that spirit because I've been qualified by the Holy Spirit. An example, yesterday in the prophetic service, there was a beautiful couple, a husband and a wife. They stood before me. In a they, are, they, are, they are much elderly. Beautiful couple stood together. And the husband said, this is my wife. And the wife said, this is my husband. But when I looked at them, what did I say? Mm -hmm. You guys are saying you're together, but I am seeing you in the spirit. You're not together. One sleeps in another room and another one is sleeping in another room. You are together, but you're not together. The husband and the wife were shocked. They said, it's true. But when they introduced themselves to me, they introduced themselves to me as if they were together. Yeah. But when I looked with the eyes of the spirit, I knew that they were not together. Because I saw them with the eyes of the Spirit. So I could test what they were saying because I could see beyond what they were saying. Now if somebody else who did not have the prophetic and they came to him and they said we are husband and wife, he would have prayed, oh Lord bless them, increase them. Uh, I pray that they grow and become this and this and that. Exactly. She said, let me read that again on, 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 uh, on Facebook. Yeah, let me just see, see what it's saying on Facebook again. One more time. Uh, I think her name is Grace Terry said, discernment from God. Okay, go down. Discernment from God is definitely part of it, but the word says to test the spirit. A test requires an action. Exactly. Exactly. How can you judge an action you don't know? You see, discernment is given to the spirit of man. The Holy Spirit is not the one that is going to discern through you. The spirit of God trains your spirit to get to a level where you can discern between truth and false. If it was the Holy Spirit that was discerning through people, then a Christian would never make a mistake. 
Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? The Spirit of God leads you. He can direct you. He can show you the way. But ultimately, discernment is cultivated by you maturing your soul to submit to your spirit. Because in your spirit, when you're born again and the spirit of God is in you, your spirit has been elevated to know the mind of God. If you read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I believe verse 10, it says, uh, but we know these things because they have been revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. Without revelation, you cannot discern anything. So your level of revelation determines your level of discernment. Mm. But to test something, it requires for you to be in that action. Like an example, when officers can, can discern somebody that is hiding something because they can read body language. Their instincts are sharp, not because they are spiritual, because they have been trained to pick up on certain things. But if you're not trained to pick up on those things, you can't pick them up. It's impossible. The Bible even tells you that Jesus grew in discernment. Isaiah tells you, butter and honey shall he eat mm. in order to refuse evil and to know that which is good. <laughs> The Bible tells you, so that you may know that which is good and the perfect will of God. It means it's something you mature into. The Holy Spirit or God is not going to sit there and tell you left, right, left, right. He wants you to mature to the place that you know this is the acceptable will of God. Amen. 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 It is a process that a human being has to go in the hands of God. So discernment is cultivated that's why we have different levels of discernment like sometimes i prophesy not because i'm seeing a vision not because i'm hearing a voice but because my spirit can see it yeah. what about prophets who ask for a ridiculous amount of money before they pray is that from god uh, i don't think so because you can't buy the gift of god but god can tell you to sacrifice there's a difference if I'm telling you give this money so that I pray for you, it's false. It's not godly at all. But God can tell you find this sacrifice and give so that this can happen. It happened all over the scriptures. That is biblical. But again, you need to have discernment for you to know. Because like an example, I was sent a message by my son um, Van. And there was a woman who was chatting with somebody saying that they are prophet Lovi. And she sent the guy more than $3,000. Wow. How many times have I come online and I said, guys, I will never email you. I will never ask you to send a prayer request. I will never ask you to give money. I'll never ask you those things. I don't do that. Anybody who reaches out to you and tells you or tries to, the person said they even spoke with me on the phone. They spoke to somebody that sounded like me. Oh, come on. Mm. Jesus. But you see, when you're desperate for something, you miss God. Yeah. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So be wise people. I've done posts on posts on posts on posts on posts. And even the pages that write you say, write up, uh, send your prayer request to Prophet Lovia Gmail something. I don't have any Gmail email. Hmm. I've said that a billion times. Yeah. So many, many times. But even those who write you, if you click their page, you notice that it's not any of our pages anyway. Aye. They are not verified. Or if it doesn't send you to our website and our thing, it's definitely not us. And even if it is from our page that did that, know that it's not me because I would never do that. Amen. Amen. So that is something that requires discernment for you to know. But even if it is spoken, some people, the excitement of talking to me make, does that to them. Yeah. Mm. You know, that's why even I slow down one-on-ones. Mm. Actually, next week we're going back. I'm going to finish all the one-on-ones we have before we open the new one. So if you had one-on-ones with me, just get ready. This coming week, we're going to set up a schedule so that I can minister to you. Amen. So in finishing... 
in finishing. Somebody said, uh, man of God, why so many prophets blocked me on Facebook? What did I do wrong? Ah, I am not them. You're obviously not blocked here. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you said or what you did. Oh, Jesus. If they're just blocking you for no reason, I don't know. Mm. I wouldn't be able to know that. Somebody says, so why are you saying then only way to test the spirit can only be achieved through discernment? I didn't say can only be achieved through discernment. Mm -hmm. I said this, me as a prophet, because I have the prophetic spirit, if somebody claims to prophesy, it is easy for me to know because I am a prophet. Mm -hmm. I carry that spirit so I can test that spirit because I know how that spirit works. Mm -hmm. So the moment somebody is trying to act like they are prophesying, even if they are prophesying from a negative spirit, I will know within seconds. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Because I carry that spirit, I know how it works. Yeah. But somebody who doesn't have that spirit, they need the spirit of discernment to look at what they are doing, what the intention is, why they are doing it in order for them to know if it is real or fake. Yeah. But to test something, you have to be at the same level to you to, for you to test. You can't test, like an example is this. The Pharisees could not test Jesus to know if he was from God. Mm. Mm. They couldn't mm. do that because they did not carry the spirit of prophecy that he carried. Mm. Mm. So it was impossible for them to know. So they kept asking oh. him questions. Are you the Messiah? Are you the one that we should wait for? Are you, who are you? Mm. Can you tell us who you are plainly? Stop playing these games. The reason why they could not discern it is because they did not have the ability to discern him because they were not looking at the clues that the Messiah was going to bring. Yeah. They were worried about their temples being empty and people going to a field to a young man. Mm. Mm. So when he was healing the sick, they said he's healing by the spirit of Beelzebub. Beelzebub. Mm. When he was doing this, they were calling it something else because they hated him because they had no way to discern him. Listen to what the Lord Jesus said. The Lord Jesus said it this way. Why is it that you cannot hear my words? Why is it that you cannot understand my speech? It is because you are children of your father, the devil. Why did Jesus make that statement? It's because he knew if they had the same spirit, they said, no, our father is Abraham. I said, he said this, if your father was Abraham, yes, then you would have yeah. loved me the way he loved me Come because on. the spirit of Abraham would have been in you and he would have been attracted. He would have attracted you to my spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. you're not the children of Abraham. You're yeah. children of your father, the devil. Yeah. Come on. I, are you getting what I'm trying yes, to say? Yes. Yes. The issue is you cannot test what you're not in. Trust me, you can't. Come on, come on. It's impossible. But you can discern it. That's why you need discernment. Yeah. Because not everybody is called to be a prophet. Yeah. Right. That is why the Bible gives you steps of how you can know if the prophetic is, not, is from God or not. There are ways to, to, to examine. There's a way it can be established among people. There are steps that follow. But a prophet will know who is a prophet and who is not. Amen. Yes, How many times even in our church that people who couldn't prophesy, they come pretending they can prophesy and I have to pull them to the side and tell them, stop. Yeah. yeah. It's true, true. Yes, it's true. Because I know that they are faking because they are not hearing from God. Oh, Jesus. Because there are patterns that follow for somebody who, you know how it works. It is so easy to know because it's my gift. So I don't need to sit there and examine what they are saying, why they are saying. I can know immediately by the Spirit of God because I hear His voice. Yeah. I've been hearing Him since I've been six years old. Wow. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So when I'm training people to hear God, I can train them to hear God because I know how He sounds like. That is why Elijah had the school of the prophets because he could teach them what he already knew. So you can't test what you don't have. It's yes, impossible. Yeah. But you can discern what you don't have. Yeah. If somebody tells you I have a test, this I'm just using regular things for everybody because it's easy for people to understand. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody has a Tesla and they said, wow, my Tesla is so loud, the way it raves the engine. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to be a car engineer to know this. Yeah. This is good. That's so good. You just oh need to God. understand, wow, but Teslas oh, wow. don't have this, they don't have this. That's impossible. That's so Not good. because you're a car engineer. Yeah, true. Yeah. 
If you tell the same thing to a car, in the, for, to a Tesla engineer, who say number one, Teslas have no engine. Number two, this is how the motor works. This is how it is. This, if it is loud, actually, it means there's something wrong. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Come and on. they can mm. tell you why that could happen. Jesus. Are, are you understanding what I'm yes, saying? Sir. Yeah. But somebody who just is general about cars can find that out quickly. Not because they make engines. Not because they make cars. Because it's obvious. Yeah. Okay. It's the same thing. Yeah. That's really good. Wow. It's the same thing. Yeah. An example is this. Let, let's look at the Bible. Because this is a good topic. I, actually lo I love questions actually. Let me show you something. Are you ready? Yes. Uh, this is going to be really nice. Uh, there are two scriptures I'm going to show you. Acts chapter 16, verse 16. Acts 16, 16. Acts 16, 16. Acts 16, 16. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, as we went to pray, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Mm -hmm. The same followed Paul and us mm -hmm. and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which shew unto us the way of salvation. Uh -huh. And this did she many days. But uh -huh. Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit. Stop right there. This woman has the spirit of divination inside of her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True men of God come in the city. Uh. She is prophesying the truth. Yes. These are the men yes. that will lead us to salvation. So what she is saying is true, a hundred percent the truth. There was nothing that she said that was not biblical. Mm. <laughs> Everything she said was biblical. These are the men that will lead us to salvation. There are even people who listen to that woman that followed Paul and Silas. Because These are the men that will lead us to salvation. They will show us the way to God. But the Bible tells you that Paul was grieved in his spirit. Why was he grieved in his spirit? He could tell that spirit was not from God wow. because of his spiritual ranking. Sir. Mm. Not because Sir. of what she was saying. Yeah. Everything she said was right. Yeah. Mm. But Paul could discern, the, he went beyond the physical. Mm. Because Paul knew God. He knew the voice of God. He is a man that could prophesy. He immediately could tell that the spirit that is speaking, even though what is being said is true, the spirit that is speaking is not from God. He yes, looked at sir. her and said, you spirit of divination come out of her. Come Immediately on. the woman was delivered. Mm. But if that same woman went to a church today, they would ah. say prophetess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because everything she said was right. She wasn't lying. So you oh, see that Jesus. now, you tell me somebody who is simply in the level of discernment will never be able to decode that. Mm. How will they? Come on. Come what she's saying on. is true. That's so good. Come on. Hello. Hello. What is she, what she's saying is exactly true. She didn't lie. Mm. <laughs> she couldn't lie. So you see, even levels of discernment, there's a place discernment cannot go beyond. It takes the office for you to know. Sure. Mm. Wow. Did, did that make sense? Yes. Really yes. good. How did Paul know? No, how did she know that? Because spirits know things. Yeah. It's obvious to spirits. Because remember, what is hidden is in the realm of God. But anything that is in the realm of the spirit is not hidden. When Jesus was about to be born, it wasn't hidden. Right. The devil was already looking to kill Jesus when he was a baby. When Moses was being born to deliver Israel out of Egypt, even sorcerers knew. They knew long before even he was coming that he was going to be born. So they were waiting for the season. And when they could pick the season, they killed children under a certain age. Wow. That's so good. 
Uh, Edwin Sam said, my problem with the church is that it seems witches and wizards know who is spiritual on fire in the church and who is not. Yet most Christians can't even uh, tell who a witch or a wizard is. Right. Rather guess rather than discern. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But do you know why it is like that? Because people don't want to be taught. Oh. It's that simple. You don't want to be trained. Huh? If you are trained, you can't fall for those traps. Yeah. You see, you need somebody. Listen to me. The 12 were great because of Jesus. Amen. The Stephens were great because of the apostles. Yeah. Who are you great because of? Come on. Elisha was great because of Elijah. Yeah. Samuel was great because of Eli. Joshua was great because of Moses. Yeah. It's exactly true. Uh, somebody asked, can you teach prophecy to someone who doesn't carry what they don't have? It just needs impartation. First, impartation means that I transfer what God has given me and I share it with you. Then when I share the grace that is in me also in you, then I have to teach you how it works. Yeah. It can definitely be imparted. Even Paul says, stir up the gift that is within you that you received by the laying of hands. Meaning gifts can be transferred. But he was teaching him to stir it up because he left it dormant even though it was given to him. Yeah. Okay, let me show you another one very quickly. Go to Acts chapter 8. Are you ready? Acts chapter 8 verse 9 to 13. Acts 8 verse 9. Mm-hmm. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery yes. and bewitched the people of Samaria, mm -hmm. giving out that himself was some great one, mm -hmm. to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, mm. this man is the great power of God. Notice the man did such great things that people even called him the power of God. Yeah. Mm. Keep going. <laughs> And to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. Mm -hmm. But when they believed Philip, uh, when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Mm -hmm. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Notice the people of the city could not tell if he was fake. But when original came, Come even on. he believed the original and got baptized. And he was shocked at how they were doing these signs and wonders. You see, there are always levels. Without the higher level, listen, the greater, the greater will bless the lesser. Yes, sir. You can't test what you don't have, guys. Come on. Mm. You can't. Mm. It's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. This is why humility is such a key thing in the kingdom of God. Yeah. Humility is such an important thing in the kingdom of God because Amen. without humility, we are in trouble. Somebody says, please, I want to know if it is true that some prophets can take your gift from you by laying their hands on you. That's a lie. The gifts are given by God, not by men. And the gifts of God are without repentance. Yeah. God gives you something, he doesn't take it back. Amen. It doesn't work like that. Somebody says, uh, well, uh, what about those people who do expose it, uh, exposed videos about men and women of God? With what sp spirit are they operating? The spirit of Lucifer. Amen. Yeah. Mm. Who, who sent, who, what ministry of, exp have you ever heard of the ministry of exposing? <laughs> <laughs> These people are supposed to be intercessors because they know what is going on with people. But instead they are destroying people who are actually saving more souls than them. But what they have ended up doing is dividing the church instead of building the church. Mm. It's the spirit of Lucifer. It's really that simple. Wow. That's deep. Okay, let's, let's finish for today and to be continued tomorrow. How many people want to do part two? Do you want me to do yes, part two? Yes, please. If part you want two. me to do part two, just comment so that I know for sure you're serious about it. 
then I will show you how to overcome the spirit of Lucifer. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe I'll give you one step when we come back. Amen. Uh, quickly go to prophetlovi.com. Grab your best offering that you want to give to God and just give God, honor God. And then we'll be back. I'll give you one point and then we'll continue tomorrow because we've gone way beyond our time for today. But go quickly, give to God and then we'll be back and then tomorrow we'll continue. God bless you all. God bless you all. Uh, I want you, I really, really want you to, to make sure that you, you rewatch this and I'm really praying that you really capture what God is saying. I really pray that you will capture what God is saying. Not only to me but also to you. Hallelujah. 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 Is, is somebody getting what I'm saying? Yes. yes. So, the spirit of deception is the spirit of Lucifer. So, God doesn't want us to be a deceived people. Because when deception enters, it brings corruption of what God has given us. He corrupts it. So, I really want to do a second episode of this so that you will really, really mature In, in, in the fear of God, walking perfectly before God according to his will. So that whatever God has called you to do, you will do it without any uh, delays and, and confusions that the, devils bring, uh, the devil brings in people's lives. Mm -hmm. So I implore you by the Spirit of God to, to be wise, to be vigilant, Amen. and to be prayerful always. Tomorrow when I come on, I'll tell you how to overcome and to remove this spirit from your life forever. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And the moment you understand how that works, freedom will be really yours indeed. Yeah. The Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So you are not free because you prayed. You are free because of a truth that you know. Liberation is in truth. Liberation is not in prayer. Prayer affirms the liberation that you know through the truth. The truth is freedom. Father, I pray for everybody that is watching, no matter where they are watching from. I pray that the truth of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth will be upon them. That from today there will be people who desire the truth that only proceeds from your mouth, O oh Lord. Amen. Lord, the spirit of Lucifer is all over the earth. There is so much confusion and deception. But Lord, we thank you that in you there is clarity and there is truth. Jesus, you are the light that came from above. You are the true light that lights up all mankind. Lord, I pray that we will come to know you better and deeper than we have ever known. Amen. May your name be glorified now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen.